بنت الشلبية عيونا لوزية حبك من قلبي يا قلبي وانت يا عيني بحبك من قلبي I feel like I'm going to school when I wear a white hijab. Mother, look, I'm not wearing a black hijab. I don't think I'm meant to be as social as I've been the past couple of weeks because I lost my voice. Also, it's 2.35 in the morning. Good morning. Sabah al khair. But I want to read this poem because, unfortunately, it's really important to me. It is a little bit too relevant to who I am, who I was, who I'm no longer trying to be. It's by Sylvia Plath and it's called Fig Tree. I saw my life branching out before me like the green fig tree in the story. From the tip of every branch, like a fat purple fig, a wonderful future beckoned and winked. One fig was a husband and a happy home and children, and another fig was a famous poet, and another fig was a brilliant professor, and another fig was E.G., the amazing editor, and another fig was Europe and Africa and South America, and another fig was Constantine and Socrates, and it's still 2.30 uh, in the morning, and a pack of other lovers with queer names and offbeat professions, and another fig was an Olympic lady crew champion. And beyond and above these figs were many more figs I couldn't quite make out. I saw myself sitting in the crotch of this fig tree, starving to death, just because I couldn't make up my mind about which fig I would choose. I wanted each and every one of them, but choosing one meant losing all the rest. And as I sat there, unable to decide, the figs began to wrinkle and go black, and one by one, they plopped on the ground at my feet. I think we need to backtrack a little bit, because I told you guys that the reason my eat, pray, love, nomad era lasted so long unintentionally was because I wasn't quite ready to go back to living in this world that I was living in before, right? That is partially true. But another part of that truth is that I never could have anticipated feeling, it's literally three in the morning. بس الدنيا رمضان. First of all, first of all, رمضان مبارك. تصوموا وتفطروا على خير وان شاء الله. We leave Ramadan better than we entered it. Anyway, back to my eat, pray, love year. I never could have anticipated this feeling of having no idea where I'm supposed to be. You know when you go on vacation and like one hour into it, you're chilling, thinking I could live here. And you're already looking for apartments. You're trying to figure out the price range. You're like, okay, I'm going to change my entire life so I can live here. I felt that, but with every single place that I went to, which isn't on its own a bad thing, right? But the issue was I was so indecisive and I was like, okay, I could live here, but if I live here, then I can't do this other thing that I want to do, but it's okay because I can do this thing, but oh, there's something else I want to do or another way that my life could play out. And I don't want to ruin that by being here, so I won't. I will delay this decision for as long as possible. And I think it took me a while to grasp that my indecisiveness was just a not so gentle reminder that I needed to detach from dunya. I need to step in here quick to add a bit more context, but it's a few hours later and my voice isn't any better. In fact, I think it's worse. But I want to clarify that the reason the indecision was so difficult was because the longer I didn't make a decision, the harder it got to make a decision. Mainly because I felt like I didn't really have roots anywhere. Like I could go anywhere and there's only so many times in your life that you can start over in that way. So it felt like a really, really critical decision for me. And the longer I went, the harder it got to make that decision. Okay, back to the video. Because I've been so afraid to make a decision or say that I live in one place because I feel like it'll close the door on another place or it feels like, oh no, like I'm starting over, even though I love starting over, but I'm a walking contradiction. So maybe I don't love starting over, I don't know. Which by the way, okay, unrelated, but I used to think that being adaptable was a good thing until I thought that it was a bad thing because I thought that it meant that I didn't have like a strong personality or a strong sense of self and people who know themselves aren't as adaptable as I am. And I think through traveling so much, I was able to experience so many different versions of myself. And I used to think that all these different versions of who I am contradict one another. Therefore, I am a hypocrite perhaps, or I 
again, don't have a strong sense of self. But I think through travel, I've realized that they're all a version of me, but they're not who I am as a person. Like, I don't have to attach anything to my identity. You know, I'm just, besides Muslim, I, I'm Muslim first. Aside from that, like, I don't have to attach anything. I can just exist. And I think I used to be really, I still am a little bit, I'm getting better at it be really, really crippled by like contradictions and not wanting to contradict myself because obviously in Islam, being a hypocrite is a big deal. I just went on a whole tangent about contradictions and that's not what this video is about. So I'm gonna cut that out. But in conclusion, in summary, if you try your best to be a relatively good person, you shouldn't be so afraid of contradicting yourself. And you should learn to love to change your mind and not be afraid to change your mind. What were we talking about? My indecisiveness was just me holding on to the illusion of control that I thought I had, when in reality, I just needed to praise the khara and keep it pushing because I shouldn't be so afraid that if I make one decision, then my whole life is gonna turn out a certain way. And if I make a different decision, my life is gonna turn out in a completely different way because that is a really scary way to live your life. And also a bit arrogant that you think that you even have control, like our lives are already written. And if I want it to look differently, I can try to pray to Hajjud, catch the 27th night, holding off on making any decision because I think that I have this control and I have to make the right decision because it's end all be all, that's insane. I have no idea what the next scene in my life is gonna look like, but the longer I hold off on making a decision, I might not even see it it might not even play out. I feel like I have this constant battle of everything will play out in due time, you know, just let the story play out. But at the same time, tie your camel, make decisions, do what you need to do, pray istikhara and keep it pushing. And I think when it comes to where I live, there are things that I know and things that I don't know. For one, I know that I don't want to live in the States now or long-term, inshallah. May I change my mind? Who knows? That's what I want for now. I know that I would prefer to be in a Muslim country, though I'm not one to sit here and romanticize, you know, Dubai specifically. I think there's, a, honestly, my dream is to live in Oman or middle of nowhere, Qatar, like literally. Also, when I came here, <laughs> when I came here, I was like, you guys, I want to live in Sharjah because I just want to be surrounded by masajid and I don't want to see anybody and I don't want to hear a single American accent and I'm going to live my Sharjah dreams. And then I went to charge. No, no, no. I was in traffic to charge that. I was like, never mind. <laughs> never mind. I changed my mind. You guys were all right by telling me don't do that. It was beautiful in theory. This video is not going to be a discourse video, but I will say I fought Dubai for a really long time. I fought it for a while, but eventually I was just tired of fighting it because it makes a lot of sense for me to be here right now. And for quite some time, I've felt the travel fatigue. Like, Kudos to people who can travel for years on end and kind of live out of a suitcase for years on end. It's great, it's lovely, but I think I'm ready to kind of settle down somewhere. And whether I like it or not, that has to happen. Otherwise, I'm gonna get burnt out from traveling and that's the most counterproductive thing I could possibly do. And you know, alhamdulillah, for the reminder that my indecisiveness is just me needing to detach from dunya because I feel like that realization helps me make decisions a lot quicker and a lot easier, you know, because it's just like, do it and then hasal khair. Whatever happens, happens. Most decisions in life are not end all be all anyway. And I'm a very simple woman. Out of all of the options of places that I could have gone, I was gonna do relatively similar things. You know, like it doesn't take, it doesn't take much for me to be happy. Just give me a cafe and a beach, some family, maybe an air fryer, I don't know, and like one or two friends. I will not be the fig tree poem any longer. I refuse, I refuse. Ukaman, I refute it. Uh, I'm still not entirely settled. This isn't my home. This isn't my apartment. Um, <laughs> I'm still figuring my life out. And it is really scary like to start over, but at the same time, you know, Allah ma'ai, it's Ramadan, so it feels like a good time, even though I think I'm gonna go back home. I don't know, it just feels, right and i'm not gonna fight it anymore because i'm really tired of fighting and i think you know i don't remember who in my life told me this but if you're doing something and it feels easy you know allah makes it easy then it's probably right and i'm not gonna overthink that because i'm sure that doesn't apply to everything but you know i i've, I've tried to 
if something feels right, feels easy, just allow it, you know? If there's anything that you take from this ramble, it's that indecisiveness can, can be, if you allow it to be a gentle reminder to just detach from dunya. Of course, you should take your time with making big decisions, but don't let it be out of a fear of decision. And I, you know, a long time ago, a good friend told me to just let the story play out because believe it or not, I've always been a bit of a control freak. I've always wanted things to be predictable. And when they're not, I get really anxious. But I think sometimes just letting the story play out is the best thing that you can do. And I think right now is just one of those <laughs> letting the story play out moments. So, khair inshallah. Good night. Oh, you got a video? Smart lady, huh? Yeah, they should take your license. I have to teach this girl how to eat, guys. I'm just a girl. Just a girl. Ice cream, flowers, by the beach. We're only going to grow our resources in the night, We're only going to grow in quality and quantity.